the closest of allies are also the most divisive of leaders. Indeed, Mr. Netanyahu's polarizing rule has created political paralysis here. His supporters and opponents so evenly split, neither can form a government. Israel's longest serving leader is fighting for his liberty. Pending corruption charges could mean jail. And to avoid that, he's tried to inspire his fans by promising them the West Bank. The annexation by Israel of the land meant to be Palestine under the two-state solution would kill off peace prospects, and Arabs are furious. And what it means is not only a violation of international law, but it's the entrenchment of apartheid. And I think that now the world need, really needs to take seriously this idea of apartheid. Arabs make up a fifth of Israel's population, and this man, their political leader, Ayman Ode, is urging many of them to break the habit of a lifetime and to vote rather than boycott this election. In April, their turnout was a record low, but if Mr. Ode is successful in bringing out his people tomorrow, they do have the electoral clout to help bring down Mr. Netanyahu. Is this election about Mr. Netanyahu? Is it a referendum on him? He has captured the, the political atmosphere, sucked up the oxygen in such a way that really Israeli politics is more, more about Netanyahu than any other issue. Mr. Netanyahu's strongman image suffered a blow when he had to be rushed off a stage because of a rocket attack from Gaza. Nonetheless, Bibi, as he's known here, has been pulling out all the stops, campaigning like his freedom depends on it, which it might. Back in April, Mr. Netanyahu fell just one seat short of forming a government. It literally couldn't have been closer, and things are likely to be just as marginal this time around. One or two seats will determine whether he emerges hero or villain. John Irvine, News at 10, Jerusalem.